Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do part two of my arrival in China. And this episode is called Shenyang Bound, so enjoy. Now at this time, I had traveled from Johannesburg for eight hours to Dubai with a four hour layover in Dubai and then another eight hours from Dubai to Beijing. So I was fairly tired and I was extremely cold as well because I was not, I did not have the right clothes for winter in China. So we were now on the train headed for Shenyang. Jack asked me if I drink coffee and this was music to my ears. Wei handed us these little sachets of Nescafe and Jack got out two little paper cuffs. He told me that Chinese drink hot water, not warm, but hot. This seemed very strange to me. So he said that we would have no problem finding hot water on the train to make our coffee. He sent Wei off to find it and soon she came back with two cups of hot water. Jack used the sachets, he poured in the coffee and he made coffee. Problem was we didn't have a spoon to stir it with so he just used the sachet, the empty sachet and used that as a spoon to stir the coffee. Now I was sitting there thinking I didn't really want that coffee because it didn't have any milk or no sugar but I was polite so I would accept it. I then noticed that the coffee seemed to have milk in it. Uh, I took a sip and it was awful. Well, it was drinkable and certainly very delicious at that moment as I was very cold and very tired. I also noticed that it had sugar. When we had first gotten onto the train, Wei had run off to go buy some fruit at a stall outside the train. She had pink apples, they looked like grapefruit, and these little oranges. So I tried one of the oranges and it was really good. Jack could see that I was drop dead exhausted, but he urged me not to sleep as it was too early. He said that I would feel better if I went to bed at a normal time. At that moment, a lady pushing a little cart came by and they started to buy some snacks. Jack bought some juice and something that looked like Pringles, except with Chinese written all over it and a strange picture. And he bought some cake type of thing, which is called Orion pies or Orion pies. I still to this day do not know how to read that word. He gave me one of the pies, which was essentially like two pieces of like biscuit, uh, with marshmallows stuffed in the middle and then covered on chocolate. It was almost like a kind of cake. It was quite delicious. We also ate some of the fake Pringles and they were not, they were not bad. I mean, they were pretty bad compared to real Pringles, but they were not all bad. The next five hours were dreadful. Wei was sleeping and Jack kept talking to me to keep me awake. It was so bad at one point that I was seeing double. I really, really wanted to sleep. Wei woke up after a few hours and we all started chatting. And at this stage, I was so tired that everything was hilarious to me. Looking back at it, I was probably starting to lose my mind because I was so exhausted. Inside the train was an LED screen that showed the time, speed, the inside and outside temperature. The train was moving at a speed of roughly 200 kilometers per hour and it was 24 degrees inside and the temperature outside was slowly dropping the further away we moved from Beijing. The weather in Beijing started at minus three. Three hours later, it was minus 10. By the time we got to Xinyang, it was minus 13. We finally arrived in Xinyang and I was so happy. I was extremely fed up with traveling. We got off and walked through the train station. It was seemingly nice. Certainly better than the Beijing subway station, although this of course was not a subway station, it was a train station. A Chinese man dressed in a suit and carrying a suitcase walked next to Jack and asked him where he was from. He told him he was from the Netherlands and that I was from South Africa. So the Chinese man answered with him with Johannesburg. We laughed and said, yes, Johannesburg. He was next to Jack, so I couldn't really hear everything, but it did catch my attention when he said Pretoria. We were laughing again because what were the odds of getting off a train in Xinyang and walking next to a Chinese man who knows about Pretoria? We went up an escalator and this small fat Chinese woman was holding a sign yelling things. I think she was picking up someone and she was trying to find them. She was standing next to the pole that I had to walk through. I was pulling my bag and it was not going to fit through the small space. So I figured when in Rome, I pushed through, half running her over with my suitcase. She was not impressed. She was screaming and yelling at me in Chinese and I can only assume that what she was saying wasn't anything nice. At this point, I was so sick with traveling that I just ignored her and walked away. We were now standing outside a food place called Dico's. 
There were two glass doors that we had to go through in order to enter the place. So Wei and I went through the first, but we were struggling to open the second with all the luggage. Before I knew it, two young Chinese guys came to our rescue and helped us to get inside. The people inside Deco's were clearly amazed by what they were seeing. This blonde white person with a giant suitcase. They were all staring and talking and whispering into each other's ears. Jack came in and went to stand by the wall to plug in his charger to charge his phone. And Wei was once again pacing up and down, up and down to the door and back to Jack and back on her phone, back to the door, sitting down, standing up. She just never stopped. So I decided to sit down and when I looked towards the door, this young Chinese guy was waving at me. So I, I just turned the other way. I didn't know what to do. Pretty soon him and his friends were standing next to me and asking if they could take my picture. I looked at Wei and she was laughing. I didn't want to seem rude, but I also didn't know what was going on, but I agreed. We struck a nice pose and off they went. This was very strange to me. But it was, of course, not the last time that this would happen. By now, it was almost midnight and we were waiting for someone to pick us up. I didn't even know who. Wei then told me that I would be sleeping in a hotel and the next day I would go to my new home. I was so relieved. A hotel with a nice hotel bed and a warm shower and no one around me. That would be the greatest thing at this point. After waiting for about 30 minutes, this Chinese girl burst through the doors like she had just won the lottery. I assumed that this was my host sister, Mayna. I could immediately tell that she was about a hundred times busier than Wei. We stepped outside and I said goodbye to Wei and Jack. Mayna was insisting on pulling my big bag, although I kept telling her to take the red one as the pink one was very heavy. She didn't want to listen. She's super tiny. We walked in the street and I suddenly slipped on something and when I looked down, it looked like those round metallic bumps that they have at shopping malls to keep people from speeding. But it seemed odd to me as it was in the middle of nowhere and up against the pavement, kind of. It was strange. This is when I saw my very first e-bike, like scooter, and it almost ran over Mayna, but she didn't even seem bothered. We crossed the road and there were cars everywhere. They kept honking at us and I assumed it was because Mayna had parked her car in the middle of the road. And on the sidewalk next to us, two people were walking and I once again saw these bump things. But this time it was one solid piece and then I realized what it was. It was in fact solid frozen ice and it was black because, well, I guess it was dirty ice. So there we were, standing in the middle of the road, trying to load my heavy luggage, cars around us honking, an ice-cold wind blowing on me, my hands and head freezing, and I could not wait to get to my hotel, take a hot shower, and get into bed. Of course, at the time, I didn't know what would be waiting for me. 